for joining us for another exciting episode of Predator and Prey. This week, we trek to the edge of the continent. Queens, New York. We have now entered the habitat of 11-year-old Homo sapiens sapien, Addy Rinsler. Darn, we've been spotted. After three previous attempts to raise children in the wild ended in disaster, Addy was raised in captivity, where her mother is convinced she can't become another source of trouble. This is Addie's mother, Goldie, who actually sees without seeing. How does she accomplish this remarkable feat? Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, baby. I did it. I did it, darling. I did it. Despite its harrowing effect on her offspring. So where was I? Goldie navigates oh, by denial. And this, this is my Rachel. Uh, what's with him? He moved. To where? He lives in Osney. Oh, near the prison? Very. <laughs> anyway. Rachel has now got a place of her own. That's nice. She lives in her van. Don't you have a book report to write, honey? All right. Now this. This is my Jackie with oh. my little angel, oh. Debbie. Is that good? Is that good? The dream team gets a hot new recruit. I think he's going to make one hell of a football player. That's a cop. Your fries are ready. Good work, Jada. Ah, and this is Irene. She's my oldest. You're oldest? Well, the picture's a little old. She's, um... She's very popular. She's got a lot of friends. And this is Addie, whom you just met. My youngest. Addie Rinsler, the first Rinsler to go to college, right? Hey, that's nice. Sure is. I mean, her cousins went to college, but when Addie graduates, she's not going to get her own set of machine tools or a styling wand. Mom, uh, not for her. Medical school, law school, not that I want to push. The kid has Wait, more brains one minute than all of us and and everything is go. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And it wouldn't have been possible without my wife, a talented astronaut in her own right, Addie Rinsler Armstrong. Let me tell you, the kid's got some IQ. Where she gets it from, I don't know. I mean, certainly not from my husband's side, because uh, that family, they've been known to get stuck on escalators. <laughs> Uh, this, this is a picture of all my girls. Oh. Katie, you see my lighter? <sighs> they used to play so nice together. They hate me. Sisters don't hate sisters. Mom, they call me the afterbirth. <laughs> It's because they envy you. There's a difference. Then stop bragging about me. It makes it worse. I admire your brains. It's a crime now. Huh? Not that I don't worry about you and those books. You do? Are you kidding me? Since you've started reading this science fiction stuff, it's like you're in some, some fantasy land or something. I don't think it's healthy. And I don't want you to turn into your Aunt Robin with the PhD and the Russian novels and those cats. Remember, brains and a husband are not mutually exclusive. And of course, I love your father, but uh, it's just as easy to marry a rich one I know, Mom. Good girl. I just love this skirt. Stop it. Oh, this is very becoming. I don't wear skirts. 
Look, it's very becoming. Yes. <laughs> Can I take it back to the dressing room for you? Thank you so much. Oh. Here. And here. Sorry. Come on. Well, this is my favorite showcase, huh? You know your mother in jewelry. Very hey. trashy. Common. Oh, and this. Animals and jewelry. I mean, that's like combining church and state. Oh, but Abby, that, that's what I mean by quality. Which one are you looking at? Oh, nothing. Addy. It's very becoming. Are you kidding? It's gorgeous. You have these in your six? Well, let's see. Um, are they for you? Yes. Thanks. Come on, kid, let's look at the culottes. Six? Put your eyes back in your head. She had a lovely face. What's the matter? Did you remember your clean underwear? Mom. Oh, look at that. That's wonderful. Yes. Uh, hello, Babs. Hi, Cole. How are you? I'm fine. Huh? Where's that stuff? I put it on a hook in the middle. Thank you. I'll be waiting. Now, this is very smart. A very smart look. Come on, darling. Is this one of my honeymoon? Come on, darling. Look at this against your skin, these colors. <laughs> That's wonderful. Sorry. Great skirt. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sweetheart, come on. Come look at the little two by nothing in the dressing room. Outside. Why? There's no reason to be self-conscious. You've got a gorgeous little figure, honey. Addie? She's gonna be the first Rinsler to go to college. College, college, college. Scared? No. No. No, you think this is a joke? You should be. You want to steal? Take the bus, go up to Bloomingdale's, because I can't afford it. Little midget jewelry thief. That's the bottom rung, do you know that? Top rung, you got the housewives who have to steal medicine for the little babies, you know, like Vicks or something like that. Next rung, you got your. You're elderly poor. Honey, you must be mistaken. Of course. She was probably putting something back on a hanger. Sweetheart, jewelry, we don't put on hangers. Jewelry? Mm-hmm. Oh, nuts. Ninth rung, you have the uh, kleptomaniac housewives who, uh, they got a disease, they have a sickness, they can't help that. But you, you, you little four-eyed Guggenheimer, you're on the wrong inches from the ground. Addie, kind cops. What? On hold. Hey. You know, I could call 911 and say, lady, please uh, send in the cops. I'm cut, cut completely in half. They'd still put me on. What is the matter with you? It's a little kid. Should we call a lawyer? You better get Jacoby and Myers down here, because you're in it good. Now, listen to me. You have no idea what a sensitive, thoughtful thing my daughter just did. What? Excuse me? She did it for me. She did it so that for once in my life, I could have something really nice. Lady, your kid is a shoplifter, not Robin Hood. Look, <laughs> you. I didn't go through that fourth labor so that she could turn out like her three sisters. You know what it's like to have your kishkas eaten out by your own children, hmm? Kishkas? From the convict boyfriends, to the tattoos, to the APBs, to the posting bail for them, to the cockamamie religions. 
Not that they're not all lovely. They're all lovely, even the illegitimate grandchildren, but uh, a mother can only take so much. Now, uh, I don't trust the others as far as I could throw them, but this one, this one is good. What's this? I stole it. This you took? <clears throat> Listen, lady, that's a sad story you got there. I'm sorry. Thanks. Consider your kid banished from the store and, and, uh, and go. Thank you, uh, Lyle, Mr. Ellis. You good man, Mr. Ellis. Thank you. You're a bench. You're not a thief, and I don't want to hear that again. What do I have to do, Robert? Gas station? You know it's true. Shut You listen to me. I need a promise from you. You must swear that you will never, ever repeat what I said about your sisters. I don't mean a word of it. I had to get you free, and that's what came out. That's what's bothering you? It's all true. Rachel lives in a van. Jackie's kids are creep. Irene chants an airport. Now, you listen to me. That's nonsense, and I don't want to hear another word about it. Go to bed. And so our young heroine remains trapped in a bizarre parallel universe. Where rules of morality no longer hold sway. And where she can pawn everything she steals. To pay for her life support system. I picked this up for you, darling. What do you think? It's very becoming. Becoming? It's gorgeous. 10% cashmere on sale. <laughs> there was it. Come here. Ah, you look gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna put this away. I'll fold it, put it away. Annie will spend the rest of her life in a universe controlled by alien beings whose behavior she will give up trying to fathom, let alone change. After all, who is she to judge 